Hey guys, today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the HDR mode on the DJI Mavic Air 2. First I'll talk about how it works, then I'll show you in which situations you should use it and in which ones you shouldn't, and in the end I'm also going to show you how to pick the right ND filter. Hopefully by the end of this video you should also be able to capture some epic drone shots just like these. Those were pretty dope shots, right? So for everybody who doesn't know what HDR means, it means high dynamic range. So basically if you capture your video in HDR, it's gonna have a higher dynamic range. It will boost your shadows and it will lower your highlights and therefore it will retain more information in your video. In order to know how to use the HDR mode, it helps a lot to first understand how it actually works. I'm not going to go into all the nerdy details because most likely I'm going to say something wrong, but I'm going to try to explain it to you how it works in general. So while the Mavic Air, which was the predecessor of the Mavic Air 2, had a 12 megapixel buyer array sensor in it, the Mavic Air 2 is the first drone of DJI which actually has a quad buyer sensor. So what does that mean? Basically, both of the sensors have the same size, but with the Mavic Air 2 on the sensor, they split up every diet into four different parts. That's where quad comes from. A diet is the part of the sensor which gets hit by the photons and captures them. So basically, on the Mavic Air 2, you have four times as many diets, and therefore you can also capture, according to my calculations, at four different shutter speeds. And therefore, if you combine these different exposures for the different parts of the image, you get an HDR video. While at first sight, you might think that all the videos captured in HDR mode look absolutely incredible, it's not something you want to use in every single situation. When I first got my own Mavic Air 2, I was so hyped about HDR mode and I just shot in HDR mode every single time. I just thought to myself, the video is going to be exposed better, therefore I will have more freedom in color grading, like why shouldn't I do it? But over the last couple of months, I flew this drone a lot. And during those flights, I found a couple of downsides when it comes to the HDR mode. It always just depends on the current situation you're in. Every light situation is different and you shouldn't use it in every one. Now I'm going to tell you in which ones you should use it and in which ones you shouldn't. So the lighting situations in which the HDR mode really shines are kind of like contrasty scenes where some parts of the image are really dark and other parts are really bright. This mostly happens when the sun is standing quite low, so either during sunrises or sunsets. Because during these situations the foreground doesn't really get much light because the sun is already quite low or it's already below the horizon. So all the foreground is quite dark while the sky is blowing up, it's super bright and it has a lot of vibrant colors in it. But it also makes sense to use the HDR mode when for example a cloud moves in front of the sun. In this situation again the foreground will be quite dark because the sunlight gets blocked by the cloud but still the sky is going to be pretty bright. So yeah in these situations the HDR mode will help a lot because it's able to kind of retain all the details in the skies either if it is super bright or if it is still cloudy and you want to get those details in the clouds while still exposing the foreground properly. So these are the situations where you want to use it. So when and why should you avoid the HDR mode? As soon as you switch to the HDR mode on the Mavic Air 2, the whole camera operates completely automatically. That means that you can't adjust any settings manually, like for example your shutter speed, your ISO, your exposure value, or even your color profile. So basically, if you hit HDR mode on the Mavic Air 2, it just goes full ignore mode. <laughs> to be honest, that's the main downside of the HDR mode, because you can't adjust any setting manually, but you just have to trust the auto settings 100%. And in some situations, 
those auto settings do some pretty weird things. So one thing is that the HDR mode tends to blow out the highlights in order to open up the shadows. So basically it overexposes the image a little bit. By turning on the zebra lines, you can see which parts of the image are overexposed. On the Mavic Air 2, you just go to settings, camera, and then you just turn on overexposure warning. I usually use zebras on any camera which offers this feature. For example, on my Sony a6500, I always have zebras turned on, but on the Sony a6500, it also gives you the option to adjust the exposure where the zebras will be shown. So normally I always just keep it at 100 plus, which means that only the parts which are really overexposed are going to be shown in zebras. So what do I mean by really overexposed? Basically everything which has zebras doesn't really contain any more information in it because it's just pure white. There's nothing else. And while I always like to use zebras at 100 plus, on the Mavic Air 2 it's a lot more closer to 90 or 95. So basically not everything which is in zebras is also going to be overexposed, which just kind of sucks because you never really know how much of the zebras is still going to be fine. For example, with this boat in the app, it looks like the whole boat is completely overexposed and blown out, while the actual clip shows that it isn't. Or also in this clip, it looks like a huge part of the sky is completely blown out, while it's actually just a really small part, which is completely normal if you shoot against the sun. I never thought that I would say this, but if you shoot with the Mavic Air 2 in the HDR mode, I would actually turn off the zebras in order to just see all the detail in this area. So the HDR mode definitely exposes quite high. I would say that it tries to expose at the maximum limit, which is possible. So sometimes it's a little bit too high, sometimes it's completely fine. But one thing which really sucks is the auto exposure in my opinion. The sensor automatically adjusts if the lighting of your scene changes and I had a couple of issues with that. For example, when I flew my drone through a small cave in Mallorca, obviously the whole environment got a lot darker and therefore the sensor adjusted and yeah, it just boosted up the exposure and the background got completely blown out, which is something that I definitely don't want to have. It's also pretty annoying if you do tilt ups with your drone where you start at the bottom and rise up to the sky with your gimbal because first the sky is going to be blown out and overexposed and just after a few seconds it's going to adjust the exposure and it's going to look fine. Another issue with the HDR mode is that it sometimes adjusts specific parts of the image differently. For example, if you pass by an object or if you pass by a specific part of a landscape and after that you have something with a different brightness. Obviously the sensor is going to notice, oh, the brightness changed in this part of the image and therefore it will adjust it. And that just looks super weird sometimes. And this is especially a problem if you tend to speed up your clips and posts in order to get more motion in your clips, which I do a lot actually. So yeah, I would always stick to the normal mode for these kind of shots. So to sum it up, don't use the HDR mode if you think that the frame is going to be overexposed, if you have sudden changes in lighting, if you reveal specific objects or part of a landscape which has a different brightness compared to the rest of the image, and also don't use it if you like to speed up your clips and post. During normal daylight conditions, I almost always stick to the normal mode because I can adjust manually every single setting. If it is cloudy or the sunlight is evenly spread, you don't really have any advantages using the HDR mode because the HDR mode already Already has a really really contrasty color profile and so in the end you will be better off by just using the normal mode with the decent light color profile. Okay, let's jump to the next question. Do you have to use an ND filter if you shoot in HDR mode? This was probably one of the most asked questions below all of my different drone videos and the answer is yes, obviously you have to use one. I feel like there are some wrong rumors going around where people say as soon as you put an ND filter on your drone and you shoot in HDR mode, your whole footage is just going to be grainy, but that's not the case. You just have to pick the right ND filter for each individual situation and now I'm going to show you how to do it. So before before you enter the HDR mode, first go into the normal mode where you can adjust every setting manually. Then at the bottom right, select the right shutter speed according to your frame rate. For 24 and 25 FPS it would be 1 over 50 and for 30 FPS it would be 1 over 60. Now just try out different ND filters according to the brightness of your scene and just pick one where the dark parts of the frame are exposed correctly. 
In this case, it's alright if the sky is overexposed, because as soon as you switch back to the HDR mode, the shutter speed of this part is going to increase and therefore it's going to be exposed correctly as well. It's super important to pick an ND filter which exposes to the dark parts of the image, because if you would expose it to the highlights, then as soon as you switch back to the HDR mode, it's just going to boost up the ISO and therefore you will get grainy footage. If you still use the standard ND filters which come with the Mavic Air 2 Fly More combo, I highly I recommend you to upgrade your ND filters because you want to have ND filters of all the different values of 4, 8, 16, 20, no, 32, 4, <laughs> 32, 64, and so on. One ND filter set which I can highly recommend is the one of Freewell. It has eight different ND filters, also polarizing filters on top of some of those. And yeah, I've been super happy with those. And if you want to purchase them as well, you can find a link in the description, which is an affiliate link. So I will get a small commission, buy them via my link, and I'll get some cash. <laughs> If you feel like you found the right ND filter, switch back to HDR mode and everything will turn automatic again. You won't see which shutter speed you're using, but as we exposed it correctly in the normal mode before, we know that the dark parts of the image are going to expose at 1 over a 50th or something close to it, while the bright parts of the image are going to be something of, I don't know, around 1 over a 1000 or something like that. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter that the sky is exposed at such a high shutter speed because most of the time you don't really have much motion going on in the sky anyways, so you wouldn't really see any motion blur going on there. So again, to sum it up, first go into normal mode, adjust your shutter speed and expose to the dark parts of your image. Then switch back to the HDR mode and have fun with it. <laughs> Hopefully I was able to answer some of your questions that you had to the HDR mode and if you still have some questions regarding some specific topics then just drop them down in the comments below and I will try to answer them. Again a huge thank you to you guys for the massive support on all of my other drone videos. Those videos got so many views I never really expected them to blow up like that and they kind of helped to grow this channel to the point where we are at right now. If you haven't watched any of the other videos yet you can find a link to those in the description and also if you're looking for for some more drone tips, I made another tutorial which is called 5 Pro Tips on how to shoot cinematic footage with your drone where I talk about all the different settings which I use on the Mavic Air 2 and also some general things that I always like to do in order to get banger shots. <laughs> if you want to know exactly what kind of gear and accessories I use for my drones, you can check out my drone kit on kit.co. You will find a link to that in the description. You will find all the different gear I use for all of my videos. Alright guys, so that's it. If you haven't subscribe to this channel yet feel free to do it and also turn on notifications if you don't want to miss out on any of the upcoming videos as you can see in the backdrop here i'm right now in mykonos uh, in greece and yeah to be honest it's super nice here just white and blue buildings everywhere you probably have already seen it in one of the last videos i'm super excited to just head out now to just grab some dinner and go out in some bars and yeah i'm going to see you guys in the next one have a great evening and i'll see you bye <laughs>